Okay, we're back live. Give it a couple minutes for people to get in here. Okay, welcome back guys. Sorry about that, but it, it just would not let me uh, rotate the darn camera. So, today, what we are going to do is we're going to take this assembly that you see right here. Hello, Chad. This is called the Radwino, and it's part of a little amateur radio that's called the bit x40 now the bit x40 is pretty cool it costs 59 dollars hey brian welcome from ireland i'm sorry i said 49 i think it's 59 dollars and it covers the 40 meter band which is a uh, seven megahertz band and it consists of two boards We've got this board here, which is the main radio board, and this board here, which they call the Radwino, which consists of an Arduino Nano, a uh, two-line LCD, and the uh, SI5351 multi-clock generator. And when you put these together, you get a nice little low-power, what's called QRP, transceiver. So that's what we're going to do today. First of all, I want to thank you guys all for coming and warn you, this is not a tutorial. This is an experiment. It could go boom. Uh, secondly, if you guys wonder why I'm not at work today, well, I've got an incredible opportunity to do some traveling for the school as a representative, but I had to go to my doctor and get a clean bill of health because, as some of you know, uh, my health not so good. Uh, she didn't want to let me go, but I talked her into it. So that's all good. Now, couple things. You guys are lucky because you're going to not only get to see this video. Here's a preview of tomorrow's video. And there's going to be a giveaway just for you guys at the end of this. No, it's not going to be this radio. That's for me. Anyway, the Bit X does not come with a case. So you have to do your own case. Now, I had one almost 3D printed, and then my 3D printer broke. So uh, I got an aluminum case. Actually, it's just an aluminum project box. This is the bottom of it. This is the main radio board. The Radwino will plug in here. And there's the front. Pardon this. I didn't have time to get this screwed in properly, so it's just hot glued. This is the volume control, which also has a power switch. But I'm not going to uh, I'm not going to use that. I prefer a real power switch. Sorry about that, Trent. This is a function button that we'll be using later on to switch between upper sideband and lower sideband so I can do digital modes. Now on the back of the case, we have our DC power in. All it needs is um, 12 volts, two amps. And it comes with a BNC jack for the antenna, but I don't like BNC jack, so we're going with the SO239. Now, another thing about it, can I, can I zoom in here? Will it let me? Yeah, how about that? Oh, there comes a train. Perfect timing. Well, it comes with a single turn 10K pot for tuning, but that's going to be really fast tuning through the band you only you've only got from 7.0 to 7.3 megahertz 
So I replaced the 10K single turn with the 10K 10 turn pot. That'll give us a little more smooth tuning. And I 3D, whoops, let me go back in. Hi, Heather. This is the 3D knob that I printed for the tuning. That's gonna work out all right. And the last part of the case is the top in which I have mounted a speaker. So that plugs into one of these headers and we'll get to that later on. Now, one thing, if you're into radios at all, is you gotta have shielding everywhere. So a metal case will provide good RF shielding and you want this wire from the antenna to the board to be as small as possible. So that's about two inches. And I also wrapped it with copper tape to provide us with good shielding there. So let's take a look at the instructions. Oh, are you kidding me? I got hiccups. Yep, I got hiccups again. It's part of the congestive heart failure, so not too much we can do about it. All right, so here's our here's our diagram right next to the board and they're lined up in the same way are they no like this yeah like this okay so here's our antenna then we have our volume connector we're actually tuning then volume then mic we're going to put the mic in later. Not a big deal right now. Over here we have the main board power. And a push the talk. And uh, that's going to go along with the mic. So we don't need to wire that up at this point. Alright. So the first step that we need to do. As you can see is the antenna connector. And that's already done. So we can just plug that in I've had quite a day so I totally expect things to go oh let's call it a goat rope today are you guys familiar with that military terminology they're basically levels of screw up at the bottom is probably the goat rope followed by a snafu then a clusterfuck and then foobar. Okay. So our antenna is hooked up. Next step. It says are our DC power connections. So that's back here. Oops. This is... I'm too, I'm too unorganized for this. All right. So our, our power comes in through this jack here. Did it just get really dark or is that my screen? Guys, is it getting darker? Hello, anybody? No? Nobody there? Oh, I bet it is reflections from the case. Yep. Thank you, Chad. Yeah. I told you I was off today. All right, let's zoom down a little bit. Okay. So the DC power comes in here, and then we need to run it up here to the switch. Now another thing it didn't it doesn't come with is a fuse. But I've got a little 10 amp inline fuse. So we're gonna fuse the hot side here. I've already got solder on both of these. 
So that should put it together nicely. Yep. And then we're going to go to one side of our power switch. Which I need to tin. Julio, I am assembling a uh, radio. It's called the Bit X40. It's made by a guy in India named Ashar Farhan. It's an amateur radio, a ham radio. And uh, when you, if you ever decide to get into ham radio, getting your license is relatively easy. But the next step, getting a radio, a high frequency radio, can be quite expensive. Uh, the cheapest one you can get new is like six hundred dollars. That's for the Olinko DX8. Yeah, I'm not quite happy with that joint. So this radio, which is a kit that you build yourself, is fifty nine dollars. Yeah. And, and in my opinion, that really takes that barrier, that high price barrier to entry away, which is very nice. Because I've only been doing the ham radio now for a couple months, and I'm having a blast. I mean, it is just so much fun. But when I first saw the prices, I was just like, holy cow. It's no wonder there are so few hams out there. All right, then we got some heat shrink, which you notice I always put on first. Oh, man, I keep, I move my soldering station, so I keep bumping the camera. I'm very sorry about that. I also don't have a heat gun, so we got to do it this way. Uh, one other thing I want to talk about, a couple months ago, I did a video on how to clean and retin your soldering iron, and it got more views than any video I've ever done. And if any of you guys have seen that video, you'll know the, the, that picture I showed of that horrid soldering iron. I said, if your soldering iron... Yeah, it is kind of hard to put it on, Chad. Your soldering iron looks like that one in the video. I said, you're just lazy. And I received a ton of comments from people saying that I shouldn't have said that. Right, you're right. I mean, that wasn't a polite thing to say. But I learned to solder in 1988 in the Navy. And... They taught us, well, he taught us, it was a Filipino Master Chief named Master Chief Reyes. And Master Chief Reyes would look at your soldering iron all the time. And if it looked, even had any, any brown spots on it at all, he would tell you, you're just being lazy. So, oh, I, gotta, I gotta quit bumping that soldering iron. I'm sorry. So, that's where I got that from. And if I offended anyone by saying they were lazy, oh, I need to tin that first. <laughs> I can't do the big Clive thing where he holds six things in his hand. Yeah, I apologize if I offended anybody with that. But I guess that, that's, you know, kind of where some of my teaching methods come from. You know, those are your formative years. <laughs> I'm lazy too, Trent, to tell you the truth. The older I get, the lazier I get. Okay. So that goes there, that goes there. Need another piece of heat shrink. 
Remember, always got to put that heat shrink on first. Hey, if you guys want to chat about anything while we're doing this, you know, have any questions, comments, want to know anything, feel free to ask. We need something to talk about. Hey, uh, yesterday, I went up over 14,000 subscribers. So, thank you. Oh, excuse me. Every one of you. That's just awesome. Oh, man. Oh, guys, I'm sorry this live stream is turning out disjointed as hell. This is not the proper way to tip. Like I said, it's been a uh, an interesting day. Oh, the ground goes directly to a ground connector. Yep, losing my mind. For those guys, for those of you guys that uh, aren't hams. We are in the bottom part of the sunspot cycle. So connections are kind of bad when you reduce single sideband, which just means voice. Oh, pardon me. I had hiccups in another video. I can't remember which one. But what I have found to be a lot of fun are what's called digital modes. Which is basically, basically, <laughs> what happened there? Oh, there we go. Yes, heat shrink, heat, heat shrink. <laughs> can't even, talk, can't even talk. Digital modes is hooking your radio up to your computer and having the computer make noise is kind of like a. A modem connecting in the old days and it works wonders <laughs> um oh jesus there is a website called qrz if you go to that website and put in my call sign ke8 ixe i think you can go to my logbook and you'll be able to see all the connections I've made in the, in the past week. I've been over to Italy, England, France, and the Canary Islands. And that's on a, on a mode. A mode is just a, a way of communicating called FT8. It is a what's called a weak signal mode. Yeah. So if just the smallest bit of a signal is able to get out, you'll be able to connect, not connect. You'll be able to have a conversation. <laughs> okay, Proteus, this is a uh, ham radio build. This is a kit called the uh, Bit X 40. Uh, Trent, the speeds are rather slow. For this mode. Yeah. There, there you go, Dave. Tell them about it. But by using these really slow speeds, you're able to... The, the, the system is able to use the uh, protocol. Oh, my God is able to use the protocol to pick out these incredibly weak signals. Now, most modern ham radio uh, transceivers you can buy these days are 100 watts. But when I do the digital modes, I transmit on 10 watts. And I know a lot of guys go even smaller than that. Okay, so now we hook up the power.
You guys can't see that. This board oh, is really well made. And it's, it's made in India. And it says it's made by a coalition of women who otherwise wouldn't have work. Um, give me a second here. Yeah, it does. They're all handmade in India. And what was surprising is I ordered this last Saturday. And it came yesterday. That's amazing. So they must have had some in stock. Pardon me, I spit out my dip and I'm going to get some water. Maybe that'll help. All right. So that's the first step. We've got power. And when this is all done, I've got a bunch of wire wrap. I'm going to clean it all up, but we're not going to get into that today. Maria, what's 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 the um for? I know, Dave, that's amazing. They ship via DHL. Okay. Next, we're supposed to wire up the Raduino. So we can get the big board out of here for a few minutes. Uh... Okay, so it says connect an 8-pin connector, and they gave us a ton of connectors. Like, here's the hardware that came with it, minus that cap. But like, there's the uh, 10K single-turn pot they want you to use for tuning. Some little 8-inch phon phono jacks. There's the BNC they want you to use for the antenna. They even provide a mi microphone, but I've got mics we're going to use. Uh, lots of standoffs. All kind of good stuff. Okay, connect the 8-pin tuner to the top of the Raduino. So here again, here's the Raduino. Oh. With the tech license for ham, you have access to the lower channel. You have 211 frequencies connect. Yep. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's true, Dave. But I tell you what, when I took my test, I took the tech and the general together. It's not that hard because I knew I wanted uh, access to to the HF bands. All right, I guess I do need to bring this back in. Dag nabbit. Okay, solder the violet wire to the eight pin connector in the middle of the tuning control. So there's our violet wire, which I'll strip. And again, the tuning connector, or the, the, <laughs> God. The tuner is this 10K pot right here. And the wiper is that little guy in the back. So let's get that in there. I'm going to reach for the soldering iron, and I'm not going to bump the camera this time. There. I'm not a... Complete idiot, only 75% or so. Although the hiccups do make soldering a bit of a challenge. All right, we get a joint? Yes, indeedy duty. So that's the uh, violet wire. Next, the green wire. Goes on the right. Well... I don't know what the right is, so we're just going to have to guess. And if it's wrong, 
it's not a big deal to resolder two wires. So let's call this one the right wire, even though it could be the wrong wire. All right, here's a stupid joke for you while I'm soldering. Young man goes to the circus, and he loves it. So after it's over, he decides, our other channel? I don't know what that means. He decides he wants to be in the circus. Oh, you found me. Okay. So he goes up to the manager, and he says, uh, I want to be in the circus. And the manager says, okay, what can you do? He says, I do bird impressions. The manager says, is that it? He says, yeah. Well, the manager says, well, I can't really use you that's, if that's all you do. So the guy says, okay. And he flies away. But I'm bumped. <laughs> now, the yellow wire goes to the other side of the tuning control. <laughs> I know that's a stupid joke. My son told me that. He's 14. I can't believe he's 14. Seems like he was <laughs> just born. <laughs> born, born with a PlayStation controller in his hands. Although now, at 14, he has a girlfriend. And she is tiny. And he's big. Like, I'm not all that tall. I'm about 5'10". And at 14, he is already taller than me. Eh, it's not soldered yet. Uh, soldering is much easier when you're not doing it on camera. Okay, I missed that last comment. Let me bring it up here. When soldering, if it smells like chicken, you're holding the soldering iron wrong. Yes! Yes, yes, indeed it does. Oh, I, I burnt myself about a year ago right here. And it hurt for days. Okay, now we need to solder a 0.1 microfarad ceramic disc capacitor between the yellow and the violet. So that should be marked 104. And it is. Sorry about that bumping. Woman comes to a psych practice says, my husband thinks he's a helicopter. Okay. Go on. Go on whilst I solder. Then your husband has to come in, she says. Well, what does she say? <laughs> Where can you land? <laughs> I love jokes. But most of the one oh shoot. Most of the ones I know <clears throat> are not fit for mixed company. Although I'll tell you one that's not too bad. Old man comes home from work one day and finds his wife in her birthday suit on the couch. And he says, what are you wearing? She says, it's my love dress. He looks at her and says, well, it needs iron. <laughs> my dad loved that joke. <laughs> I must have told it to him a hundred times. Hard to believe he's been gone almost two months now. My dad had a emphysema 
and COPD. And even though he quit smoking 30 some years ago, once the damage is done to your lungs, it's done. All right, let's get that soldered on here. This uh, capacitor is for tuning stability. Thank you, Trent. Uh, Drawbara, or Dabara, whatever, however you say your name. This is a ham radio transceiver called the Bit X40. Um, like I said at the beginning, you must have missed it. When you get into ham radio, the biggest barrier to entry is not getting your license. Getting your license is just a little bit of studying. The barrier to entry is the price. Oh, Trent, I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah, the biggest barrier to entry is the price. The cheapest um, you know, new transceiver you can buy these days is the Alinko DX8, and it's around $600. This is a kit designed by a guy named Ashar Farhan in India. It's 59 bucks. With this kit, anybody can get into ham radio. All right. What's next on our list? Man, I was listening to Crosby, Stills, and Nash this morning. Trebara, sure you are. It's not that hard. Connect the five pin connector to the bottom of the Raduino. Five pin connector. I look like five to you guys. Okay. Dave, yes, it does. Um, let me show you here. So the power comes into the board here, goes through the switch, and then goes to the input here, the main input. There's another back input here, which is a separate input for the power amp. And that's what I intend to do. This has a nominal 7 amp out of the box running at 12 volts. But this uh, MOSFET they're using here, um, IRF 510, I believe it is, can take up to 100 volts. So I'm not going to put 100 volts through it. But I am going to put 24 volts to it, which they say should get you up around 20 amps, or 20 watts, rather. And that should be sufficient. Okay, here's where my puzzlement comes in. Connect the 5-pin connector to the bottom of the Raduino. All right, easy enough. Well, the bottom of the Raduino has about 20 pins. So, which side do I connect them to? Hmm. Okay, I am confused. Okay, I guess if we if we go by the picture, there's the five pin connector, and it looks like it's connected all the way right. With the black wire towards the middle of the board. So here's our Redwino. There's our five pin connector. Connected all the way right with the black to the middle of the board. All right, you guys yell out if I if I did something wrong now. So Chad, have you been making any contacts lately? How about you, Dave?
Okay, so we solder the black wire to the DC power socket. I'm going to assume they mean the ground. Well, at least I hope that's what they mean. <laughs> if it ain't what they mean, something is going to go boom. Armed with his trusty soldering iron. Uh, let's tin that wire first. Oh, too hot out there, huh? Yeah, you you live near the Salton Sea, right, Chad? Do not solder. Or do not tin wires this way. I'm just out of fingers. Oh, high desert. Okay. All right. Let's uh. Oh, Victorville. I've heard of Victorville. When I was in the Navy, I was stationed in... Uh, well, I did my boot camp in San Diego. And then I stayed there f for my sea school. Oh, Dave, that sucks. Whereabouts do you live? Okay, so there's the black wire. Now it says solder the orange wire to the DC power switch on the volume control. So, orange wire. Alrighty, orange wire. To the DC power switch. So what we're doing here basically. Is we're just putting these in parallel. Whoa, what'd that say? Oh, Dr. Barry, you're in Belgium. Never been there. I do enjoy your waffles, though. Okay, so I got to hook this to the power jack. And that's going to be a problem because when I pre did my soldering, Anish from India, very nice. Gary, hi from the UK. That is a very long wire antenna. So, what do I do? What do I do here? How am I going to get to it? That's the problem. Looks like I'm going to have to see if I can get in here and get that heat shrink off. I guess you should RTFM, Paul, huh? 10 acres? That's a hell of an antenna. You could probably pick up the uh, ULF frequencies that we use to contact the submarines. Although I don't recommend that. I'm sure that's got to be illegal somehow.
All right, I think I got that off. Did I get it? Come on. Eh, hopefully I got enough of it. Yeah, oh yeah, SDR. I, I did a video on SDR a couple months ago. I've got that little um, RTL SDR from SDR Play. And yeah, I have, I've had that for about a year. And I couldn't get crap on it with that little telescoping antenna they give you. But when I hooked it up to my 33-foot vertical, things definitely got better. All right, let's see if we can get this in here. Hmm. I don't really like that. Add some more solder. When in doubt, add more solder. No, don't do that. I mean, it's appropriate in this case, but giant blobs of solder are never the answer. All right, so that's on now. What is our next step? Oh, we need another two pin connector. And since we've got all this extra wire here, I'm going to cut this pretty short. Any little wires that you have bouncing around inside are going to become little antennas. Or right, I'll tell you another story. Since I got a AT&T DSL a couple years ago, I have been unable to upload and download at the same time. Yes, I know ADSL stands for asynchronous. But I could do it before when I had a different one. All right. So I need to tin these wires. So I called AT&T, <laughs> and they sent me uh, a new uh, router, switch, gateway, modem, whatever the hell you want to call it. Yeah, so they sent me a new one. New network name, new network password, right? You never realize how many Wi-Fi things you have in your house until you have to switch modems. And it took me like an hour, mostly because I'm stupid, to uh, reconfigure my Alexa last night. I still haven't got my wireless printer done. Okay, so where were we? Red wire. Just a question, Learn Electronics. Can you turn down the mic volume? Uh, no, I have no control over it. I can move it away from my mouth a little bit. And my name is Paul, by the way. <laughs> oh, Trent, tell me about it. Yeah, tell me about it. I've got, oh, passwords. And up until last year, my son expected me to remember his passwords. I'm like, uh, no, you're going to remember your own passwords. I can barely remember mine. And what's really messed up is on one of my main passwords, on, some, on most places it's all lowercase, except for 
the uh, companies that don't allow you to have lowercase and force you to have an uppercase. So on half of them there's a capital letter and half of them there's not. So it usually takes me two tries to log in with anything that needs those passwords. Shit. Keep pass, huh? Well, yeah, did you see that? I, I apparently can't solder and read the screen at the same time. Oh, come on now. All right, Paul. Regroup. Regroup. Listen, you two damn pieces of wire. You're both tinned. I expect you to... Yeah, I'm talking to inanimate objects. Just uh, another sign of my coming senility, I guess. Dave, it is not. Just um, pretend you don't see that. This is like some really shit soldering, but it'll make the connection. Uh, Bum317, <laughs> right where you left him. Trent, you got it. What do you, what do you call a cow with no legs? Ground beef. Yeah, I love jokes. Com I love comedy. I love comedy shows. My two favorite comedians are Ron White and the late John Panette. <laughs> yeah, probably not, Chad. Yeah, John Panette was probably my absolute favorite. He died in 2008, I believe, in Pittsburgh. Okay. Solder the brown wire from the Radwinos 5-pin connector to the brown wire. Oh, are you kidding me? I did it wrong. Yeah, Trent, you, need, you should use a heat gun. But I don't have one here. All right, I got to read this again. Solder the brown wire from the Radwino. That'd be this wire to the black wire. Okay, okay, I did it right. Yeah, I don't have a heat gun here, so that's why I. I use the soldering iron. If my ex-wife were around, we could just use her hot air. Okay, soldering iron. Are there any women here? I noticed that, uh, 5% of my viewership are, are females. No. No women's. I guess that means I can tell dirty jokes then, right? Yes, Trent, it really does. You got to be quick with it or it will melt. Oh, 2014? Chat, is that when... Uh... Oh, your daughter's here. Okay. Won't be telling any of those jokes. 2014, is that when Panette died? Hmm. 
Okay. I love that guy because I'm a chubby guy too. I mean, I'm not John Panette chubby, but I'm chubby. You can tell it in my voice, right? And, uh, <laughs> you know, the stuff Panette said was so true. Like he said one time he, he had lost 100 pounds. And his friend said to him, I can, I can see it in your face. He said, my God, how big was my head before? <laughs> and uh, another one of my favorites is the Irish diet. Okay, so this is the DDS connector, direct digital synthesis. And that goes on here. All right, volume control. That's our next step. So anyway, Brian, if you're still here, I'm, I'm going to butcher your, your beautiful Irish accent. Panette says he grew up... Oh, excuse me. Panette says he grew up in an Irish fam family, or Irish neighborhood. And one of the, one of the neighbors said to him, I, you're a good boy, but you're a fat kid. I'm, I'm going to give you a diet that's going to work for you for the rest of your life. Stop your eating. If something looks good and tasty, keep walking. You're too fat for the angels to carry you to heaven if you die. Apologies for my horrible fake Irish accent. Okay, solder the red wire of the three pin connector. Three pin connector. I gotta strip and tin all these now. Why are there four four wires? Oh, that's just the end of that one. See, I am like brain dead. And that goes clear back there, so we'll need all of them. I like the blue collar comedy guys too. And I was lucky enough to get to see George Carlin before he died. And I, I do consider myself lucky for that. I mean, he was a genius. So, well, I'm soldering, what should we talk about? Uh, I think I'm going to retire at the end of this semester. Um, the 40 is about a half an inch smaller than the uh, Ubit X, micro bit X. Who, who is Caleb? Oh, Carlin, I got you. Yeah, Carlin was a, he was a New York guy. Oh, you got fat fingers too? Mine are so small, or so fat and chubby, that when I was learning to play guitar 20 years ago, I wasn't able to reach around and do the uh, thumb on the big E. So, yeah, my doctor, she's highly overprotective of me, but um, she says I need to retire. It's just putting too much stress on me. I, I don't think it's stressful. Those of you that don't know, I teach electrical engineering to college freshmen. But when I go to the doctor, like in the off season, um, things seem to be better. You know, blood pressure and all that. Okay, solder the red wire to the left lug of the volume control. 
So that's this one over here. Let us tin it first. So 49 years old. My damn doctor is going to make me retire. I mean, I made a good living when I worked for Bear as an engineer, but I don't make $20,000 a year as an adjunct professor. <laughs> okay, red wire. Next, the brown wire goes to the middle lug. Now, these lugs on the back here, those are for um, if you want to use this as a power jack, but I'm not doing that. Or a power switch, rather. I don't like to add more components, generally, but I don't like when components are doubled up. Like the old... Uh, TV, DVD players. I was never a fan of them. All right. We're getting towards the end here. Speaker cable, microphone. We're not going to do the microphone today. Wow, I, I think that is the end. So... Let's uh, bring all this stuff in here. And I am going to clean up the wires later. I promise. Connected, 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 connected. All right, now i got to figure out where the speaker... Okay, there's the speaker jack. So we're going to get... A, get all the wires in here. Uh, the deep breath when I... Breathing when I talk, it's not because I'm chubby. It's because I have congestive heart failure. And I wear a mask at night when I sleep. I wear oxygen 24 hours a day. Okay. So here's the top of the case. With the speaker already inside. Speaker's hooked up. Make sure all our wires are inside the case. Keep your hands and arms inside the case until the radio has come to a complete stop. was a loud crunchy sound that's never good okay so there's the front again ignore that i just have to fix that better there's the back can i zoom out a little more yeah there we go here is a 12 volt 2 amp power supply All right, gentlemen and Heather, place your bets. Yes, I believe you could. I know the video you're talking about, Trent. Uh, that was the guy using the uh, 
the wood panels and the metal panels and all that stuff. All right. So I guess the question you have to ask yourself is, do I feel lucky today? Well, do you, Paul? That was only one way to find out. And I've blown up plenty of shit in my life, so. Holy hell. I need to adjust the, uh, the contrast. Um, there's no sound out of the speaker. It should be hissing. It says I'm on 7.134 megahertz. Let's see if the tuning knob works. Indeed it do. But why am I not getting any sound? All right, if I can hold this up here at the right angle, there you guys can see the screen's working. But no sound. Hmm. All right. I know there's no antenna, but we should at least be getting a hiss. I did hook the speaker up to the speaker. Nope. No, I didn't. I hooked the speaker up to the uh, external supply for the power amp, which I think also needs to be hooked up. I think I may have missed that. Well, let's see if it at least makes noise now. No, the amp's got to be hooked up. Okay. Just a wee bit more soldering. And for right now, I'm just going to cheat. I'm just going to solder it directly to the power connectors for now because I've kept you guys long enough, I think. All right, let me get these tinned real quick. That should do it. All right, brown is the positive. <laughs> All right, gotta switch hands. And the black wire is the negative. Oh, come on. Really?
Yeah. Oh, I've burnt myself many times, believe me. Come on. How's that one going? Where's that black wire? Oh, there it is. Thought I was losing my mind there. Really? Oh, joyful, another train. I talked about the trains before in another video. Yeah, you got that right. There is a garbage dump about 20 miles from here. And they run trains 24 hours a day. All right, we try again, yes? Sorry for blocking your view here while I get my fat fingers in here to plug in the speaker. Okay. Okay. Try it again. Still no sound. Does it actually need to have an antenna hooked up? Give me a second, guys. Let me take my headset off here. I'll grab the antenna off my other radio. I, I don't have enough wire to come over here. So, there'll have to be a follow-up video to figure out why the sound didn't work. But before we go, I promised you guys a giveaway. And it's only for the people who are here today, so you have a 1 in 24 chance of winning. This is an IP, excuse me, web security camera with night vision. You can view it from any browser. Oh, and here come the hiccups again. So, how do you enter? Let's do it like this. <laughs> um... I was a kid in the 70s and 80s. You're going to guess what my favorite TV show was. Was it Barney Miller, The A-Team, The Six Million Dollar Man, Knight Rider, or Battlestar Galactica? Uh, send an email to me, arduino0169 at gmail.com. And... Uh, Whoever gets it first, no, I can't do whoever gets it first. Out of everybody who gets it right, we'll have a drawing. All right, guys, thank you for coming today. Thanks for sticking around today. 
I wish you guys peace and love and happiness. Because that's what life's all about. That's it. I'm out. Peace.